Now, what would happen if you starved yourself for seven days? It sounds real scary, and some people associated starving with dying, but in reality, it would be the healthiest thing that you can do for your body. In fact, out of all the things you can do for your health, I don't think there's anything that could compare with what you could do with just fasting. Now, I'm gonna get into the difference between fasting and starving in a minute, but if it is true that out of all the things, fasting can create more health than anything else, then by logic, it must also be true that frequent eating will create the most health problems that you could have. And I think that is true. I mean, take a look at how many people eat frequently. Three square meals, snacks between meals, grazing at night. I think the majority of the population is literally eating constantly. I mean, I remember in practice, there were people that would be eating so frequently, they had to even get up in the middle of the night and consume some food, or they would have blood sugar issues. I didn't know back then that low blood sugar problems, hypoglycemia, could be easily corrected by not eating so frequently. I was under this assumption, this false assumption that you had to eat to prevent hypoglycemia. And there were just certain people that had blood sugar issues, and that's the way that you have to handle it. In fact, people that have hypoglycemia or low blood sugar could easily correct it by doing intermittent fasting. All right, so how long could a person live without water? Well, about three to five plus days. The person who took the world record at surviving without food and water lasted about 18 days, but it wasn't 100%. Uh, he was thrown in a jail and people forgot about him. And the only thing that he survived on as far as liquids was the condensation on the cell wall. I really don't know how much water there is when you have condensation, but it's probably not that much. But he lasted 18 days and someone did find him, so he didn't die. And as far as someone living without food, the person who was in the Guinness Book of World Records lasted 382 days without eating any food. Now he drank water, tea, coffee. He took vitamins, electrolytes, and he even consumed yeast for his B vitamins and for some amino acids. A lot of people don't realize that uh, nutritional yeast is loaded with B vitamins, amino acids, and trace minerals. So he lost a total of 276 pounds, which is 125 kilograms. He started at 456 pounds and he went all the way down to 180 pounds. So we fasted for over a year. What you have to realize is the average person who is not overweight has enough fat calories on them, survive quite some time. They have about 100,000 calories. So if a person roughly weighs 150 pounds and they're burning between 1,000 to 2,000 calories per day, they have enough fat fuel to last about 67 days without food. Now, what happens when you stop eating is that there's some initial discomfort between one and two days. You might be a little bit hungry because you're not used to it. You haven't adapted to fat quite yet. You might feel a little bit weaker, but if you had some salt and electrolytes with potassium, you wouldn't be fatigued. But very shortly by the second and third day, you would find that your hunger would start to go away. You will no longer have an appetite. Now, I want to talk about the difference between starving your body and fasting, because a lot of the side effects from starvation occur when you're not consuming nutrients. So when you're doing fasting and the type of fasting I'm going to recommend, you're drinking enough fluids, you're taking your nutrients, you're just not having anything of substantial calories. Now, the body will start to starve when it runs out of fat. If you have enough fat, you're not going to starve because your body's going to live off the fat as the backup fuel. Now, when you're starving, you have no more fat. So the body's going to go after its muscle. It's going to eat up its muscle for fuel. And it's also going to eat up its organs. But when you're fasting, you're going to just purely burn fat. This is its purpose. I think just people have not tapped into this because there's so much food available. In fact, when you're fasting, your body protects its muscles. This is called protein sparing. Your demand for amino acids and repair goes way down. Your body becomes very, very efficient at what it does. So the main fuel with fasting is fat calories. The main fuel when you're starving is your own muscle calories and organ calories. 
Now, when you're starving, your appetite is just incredibly intense. You're going to be hungry for everything and you'll pretty much eat almost anything. But when you're fasting, you have no appetite because you are eating when you're not eating. You're eating your own fat reserve and it's a clean energy and you crave nothing. Now with starving, you're going to be very apathetic. Okay. But when you're fasting, your mood is greatly elevated. Your emotions are enhanced. You feel euphoric. So if you haven't seen uh, one of my videos, which I'll, I'll put at the end of this video, there was a gentleman who decided to uh, end his life. He wanted to commit suicide. Everything was going downhill. He had diabetes. He had all sorts of issues. So he went in his room and he stopped eating for three days. And it rebounded on him because he started feeling better emotionally, physically, to the point where he started to go online and search about fasting. And it turned his life completely around. I'll share that video in a little bit. Like I said before, fasting is hands down the most important thing you can do for your health. Now, when you're starving, you have atrophy of the muscles, but when you're fasting, you get a huge spike of growth hormone. In fact, if you compare high intensity exercise with fasting, with exercise, you're only gonna get like a spike of growth hormone by 700%. But with fasting, you can get a spike of growth hormone by 2000%. And growth hormone is all about muscle synthesis and growing muscles and preserving muscles. And with starving, you're going to be highly irritable. You're going to be grouchy, just like you see with people that have low blood sugars. But with fasting, people become very, very pleasant. They have a great sense of well-being. They're very nice to be around. They're not angry people, as I'm going to share in this success story at the end. This man was very, very uh, angry all the time, and he just could not believe how uh, that changed when he started doing fasting. It's actually quite remarkable. Now, with starving, there's a major cognitive decline. Your brain starts to shrink. You start losing focus. You start losing memory. You start losing concentration. You can't concentrate. But with fasting, you have what's called neurogenesis. You start growing new nerve cells. You start growing a new brain. All sorts of very, very cool things like uh, the brain neurotrophic factor starts increasing and you become sharper, you have a better memory, you have a lot more focus, you become a lot more creative, more aware. I mean, out of all the things you can do, what could come even close to creating these amazing effects as compared to fasting? I mean, it's just mind blowing the positive impact that fasting can have on every single part of your body. Now with starving, you're gonna be weak, you're going to be tired, but with fasting, you stay strong and you have tons of energy. I mean, a good way to know if you're taking the right amount of electrolytes, B vitamins, nutrition, and trace minerals while you're fasting is that you still have a lot of energy during the day and you can still maintain the same level of exercise performance as you do when you're eating. That is a good indicator to know that you're taking the right nutrition. Now with starving, you have massive nutritional deficiencies, Okay you start having uh, deficiencies in B1, that's called beriberi, severe, severe side effects from that. Uh, vitamin B3, pellagra, your skin starts to get all rashy and scaly, a lot of problems. And then we have scurvy, right? No vitamin C. You start becoming extremely fatigued. You start getting bleeding gums. Your connective tissue falls apart. Your joints fall apart. And then a vitamin D deficiency, rickets. So this is where you have uh, severe bone pain, osteoporosis. You have very, very weak bones. Not to mention a severe problem with your immune system. You become susceptible to viruses and bacteria and infections very easily. But with fasting, your immune system starts to become very, very strong. In fact, you start developing more antibodies. You start becoming resistant uh, to viruses and bacterial infection. The stem cells in your bone marrow start to rebuild the immune system. Your body starts going into this self-regenerative recycling mode. It's called autophagy, where it takes all this damaged, the proteins that are clogging everything up in your brain and your arteries and your eyes, and it starts to recycle that into new cells. So you start becoming younger by recycling the old waste 
And with autophagy, you are cleaning out old, dormant viruses and bacteria. I mean, how cool is that? Now with fasting, your antioxidant uh, networks are improved. So when you don't eat, your body makes more antioxidants. Wow, what a survival mechanism. With fasting, your insulin becomes more sensitive. And if you had a slow metabolism, your metabolism starts becoming stronger and faster. If you have metabolic syndrome where you have high blood pressure, that tends to go away. Also with metabolic syndrome, you have a belly fat. You see, if you ate nothing for seven days, you would lose at least 4.9 pounds of actual fat. Now, when you're fasting, your microbiome, the good bacteria in your gut, start to become very diversified. They start to live longer and you start enhancing different strains of friendly microbes. So you strengthen not just your microbiome, but the intestinal wall in your gut as well. So if you have leaky gut, you have permeability issues, that all improves. If you had allergies, those improve. If you have gut inflammation, that improves. All inflammation in the body tends to go bye-bye with fasting. And that relates to autoimmune diseases, arthritis, bursitis, tendinitis, anything related to inflammation and pain. If you have pain, that goes away too. The detox enzymes in your liver start to become strengthened. So your ability to detox improves. Your cell's ability to resist stress increases. So your cellular tolerance of stress improves. So let's say, for example, you have cancer and you have to go on chemo or radiation. Your cells resist that toxicity more when you do fasting. When you fast, you take someone from being sympathetic dominant in flight or fight mode to more parasympathetic dominant, where you're calm and you're more relaxed. And to put the icing on the cake, no pun intended, when you fast, you kill off cancer cells like crazy. If you have a tumor, the tumor starts shrinking. Out of anything that you can do for cancer, fasting is the most powerful thing you can do. The only catch-22 with doing fasting uh, for cancer is that you have to have some fat in your body to really do it effectively. But there are some things you can do if you are thin or frail. And I'm going to put that link down below related to cancer. So I hope I convinced you to do more fasting, not just intermittent fasting, but periodic prolonged fasting. You just have to make sure you take enough nutrients while you fast. And I'll put those links down below. But here's that video that I mentioned about the guy who tried to take his own life and just stop eating for three days. Check it out.